Welcome to the Uncle Hack Podcast, where dudes pretty much just talk dude shit. Welcome to another episode of the Uncle Hack Podcast. Yo, how did I do that to myself? Just kidding. Live studio audience, right? Hey, listen. Viewership, the ratings are down, okay? So I'm going to ask a little favor from you guys. Uh, If you're listening on Apple, please leave a review on the channel. Uh, If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. I don't do this very often, but it would be much appreciated. Um, What do we got in store for you? Well, guess what? We're heading to Saskatchewan. That's right. June 16th, we will be in Saskatoon. Yes. June 16th, 17th in Saskatoon. June 18th in Regina. And June 19th and 20th. In Swift Current, ladies and gentlemen, for more information, you can head to DangerCatShop.com to get uh, your tickets there. July 1st, we are back in Calgary for another Danger Room. Safe space for dangerous ideas. Oh, I tell you, I mustered it together to get in here and do a pod. I went through, oh my God. I'll, I'm just going to express myself a little bit here and get some things off my chest of like my weekend and how well it went, okay? First off, last week, watch the Oilers lose out of the goddamn playoffs. Not only lose, but get swept by the Colorado Avalanche, which sucked, but as an Oiler fan, you know what? We beat Calgary, so I'm happy about that, right? That's the main thing. We got that out of the way. Some may say like, oh, well what's the point of beating Calgary if we're just going to get swept by the Avs? Like they were going to do any better. Let's be real. Let's be honest. Like they were going to do any better. Uh, But holy shit, I got this head cold on like Thursday night, Friday morning, and just like decimated me in bed. Just kidneys hurt. My head is pounding. Snot running out of my nose like it's Niagara Falls disgusting stuff and then yesterday morning I wake up and the most excruciating pain I've ever felt from like the top of my hip bone in the back or I don't know what the fuck right in the middle of my where my spine ends and shooting pain down into my legs dude I gotta say live hard in your 20s and then like just deal with the consequences in your 30s because that's what it's going on like when you hear people say you know your old man would sit you down wait you act dumb now wait do you think you're fucking spring and spry right now wait till you hit 30 then it all goes downhill from there they are fucking correct every ounce of that information that they gave and you ignore as a youth uh as a youthful young lad full of uh you know uh, glimmer and hope of uh, a, a great future. It, it's just not that. You hit an age and it just, you're, you know, it's it's like building a nice tower. You know, you look at a tower, the tower gets built in 2010. We're not going to say 2001 because we're not going to go back there, okay? I'm not going to be that guy today. You build this nice tower and everything's nice on it for that time. 10 years goes by, it's outdated. It looks like shit. You're like, who the fuck built this thing? That's how your body feels. It starts rotting on the inside. You got mice running up and down the walls, chewing up the electrical. It just starts falling a fucking part. And you feel the effects of it. You know, there's stress cracks in the goddamn fucking basement and... Holy shit. And I've never felt that pain, that much pain in my life. Like, I, I, I listen, I've got my head punched in. I've got my knees blown out in fucking hockey numerous times. I've, my, my hands hurt every winter because of the cold from hitting pads all the time. My knees are jacked up from MMA, hockey, skateboarding. 
just putting my body through hell from my teens all the way to my like mid twenties. And then it just starts catching up with you. Holy Christ. This is my whining and complaining portion of the podcast. We got a brilliant and wonderful uh, fan question today for all of you. Um, and we're going to get into a few things today revolving around Canadian Parliament because we enjoy talking about these ass clowns, you know? I uh, it, It's... It is like pathetic when you look at the country of Canada right now. For like American listeners, I know like the news that probably spews out down there, depending on what source it's coming from. You know, the the left leaning news source is probably like, look how great and progressive these guys are and the measures that they're taking to keep their public safe. And then you go over to like, that'd be like CNN. And then you switch over to Fox and it's like, look at this dictatorship type leading that's happening under the Trudeau governing bodies uh, in their federal government up there in Canada. It's completely disgraceful to the, to democracy. And like, let's be honest, like no matter who was going to be put in the seat to guide us through this was going to be wrong, right? We can like, just call it what it is. No matter what you fucking think, I don't care who you hate and who you like. All right. No matter who is in the Iron Throne leading us through these trenches of COVID, you were going to be uh, ostracized from the opposite side, regardless of what you thought or it was the right way of going about it. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. It's clear, cut, and dry. Alberta's still taking a fucking lashing for how they handled it, opposed, and then you look at Quebec. There, They went, those are like the two extreme measures, I guess you could say. Quebec being the most tightened with its rules, having a 10 p.m. curfew. Imagine being a grown-ass man and having a 10 p.m. curfew. The government is your stepdad telling you to be home by 10 p.m. with the doors locked, lights out, and you're fucking, you better be in bed. You better be in bed. No Netflix past 10.30. Do you understand? That is insane to me. Ontario... And their dollar store is like blocking off certain sections that you couldn't shop from. That's insane, right? Looking back at like some of the things that these politicians did for your health and safety just seems criminal, right? And I don't care who they are, conservative, liberal, they're all morons. You know what this is turning into? It's like, what dweeb can we put in front of you to make you feel f something, anything? You know, root for this losing team. It's losers. I can't, I, like, I, I used to try to get invested in politics to gain an understanding of, oh, what's this? this? It just, it's a, it's a never ending drama, drama series that HBO is putting out. You know, it's like, take whatever series you like. It's Game of Thrones. There's peaks and valleys. There's cliffhangers. What are they going to do next? And we just grip our teeth into it. And it's, I hate to be that guy, but it's starting to seem like it's all by design. You know, it's all by design to just, it's a distraction to keep you angry, f full of fear. And once you like start to grasp that, this is all just, it's bullshit. It's, it's complete bullshit. And the reason I'm talking about this is just how quickly things change, you know, it's, it's, it, you got a media personality like Ryan Whitney who voiced his frustrations that took place in the Pearson airport, uh, I believe last week. Yeah, it was only a week ago. About a week ago, a week ago. Fuck with us and now we, yeah, you know. <laughs> a lot of guys are like, what the fuck are you doing? Hey, hey Grammy Savages that we, uh, that's what we are. Got shooters dressing G Star. I think that's how it goes, right? The fucking who's that rapper that they just put out? Who cares? But yes, it is. You can tell that this is all horseshit because the, the the moment like a big media personality starts getting some attention, right outside of the country. Because how? What are you gonna do? What are you possibly gonna do? We talked about Rich Voss. Uh, going through what he went, like not even what he went through, 
with that comedy club in Winnipeg. I can't remember if I did it on her. Uh, I think that's a, actually that's a Patreon exclusive episode of us shredding into rumors comedy club out in Winnipeg about the rich Voss situation that took place of a comedian that is banned. You know, uh, we're talking about a New York comedian. He was on tough crowd with Colin Quinn. He's toured the fucking world with his comedy and somehow Winnipeg fucking Manitoba you know, he goes there and then they take a stance against what they deem alt-right comedy because some woman uh, decided to open her fucking gums and him being a New York comic that doesn't give a fuck laid into her, laid into her. She interrupted the show and then uh, tried to play victim as if he was being an asshole. Don't interrupt the show. Hey, you want to be a part of it? It's not that fun when you are. And you had to learn the hard way. And then them as a comedy club, get this, them as a comedy club, lean into like, oh yeah, that that woke shit. They're like censoring comedians. Good luck fucking hiring any decent act to come through there. The desperate ones that need money will definitely go through there. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll be forged in fire of the woke fucking coals getting raked over them. Don't worry. We won't say anything offensive. Jesus Christ. But yeah, we dove into that. But here's the thing. American influence up here is greater than ever. Right now, we're tied into this gun law bullshit that's happening down there. Like, we don't have any as it is. We, anything that happens in America, because this country is so fucking boring, it is. Let's, let's call it as it is. This country is so fucking boring. There's no news to ever come out of here. Nobody looks into, hey, what's going on in Canada? Let's look at the news. What's going on in Canada until something that's like negative, negatively affects the image of Canada to, you know, the rest of America, especially from a source that can't, you know, a trusted source, especially like you're taking a guy's word of mouth who went through uh, what happened in Pearson Airport and is going ballistic over the gong show that, that Whitney went through. And I'm glad because, you know, Bozer was down there too and he had to go through the same shit, but he didn't get as much steam. Cause, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm not saying Bozer isn't popular. Actually, I am saying that Bozer isn't as popular as the Spit and Chicklets podcast. And I'm sure if I brought this up to him, he would gladly and surely agree with me. But he goes down and he goes through the same bullshit that he did. And he's tweeting funny shit about it. it there was no real like emotion that could stoke a fire. He's playing it funny. He's playing it funny where Wit Dog just went in on the fucking airport, said it's a joke, it's a disgrace, worst airport, and puts a, a black eye on Canada in the dumb restrictions that are happening here. And then guess what? Guess what happens? This is what happens. We are going to take a look at this article right here. Canada's COVID-19 travel restrictions changing uh what's changing and what's to stay in place so we're gonna listen to this fucking dweeb omar i can't pronounce his last name omar what's this fucking nerd have to say well we're gonna let the ad load up here but yes the pressure the, the opening paragraph, amid mounting pressure on the Canadian government to address long delays and wait at time uh, and wait times at airports, federal ministers have announced further easing some of the COVID-19 res travel restrictions. I mean, like, really? <laughs> You're watching the prime minister travel internationally and it depends on where he's at and what he's doing on what rules he's going to follow at that moment in time. All right, let's listen in. And its threat to our public health and our economy has caused governments around the world and in Canada to take extraordinary measures yeah. to protect their citizens. Our government has made a solemn commitment to Canadians to be prudent and focus on doing the right thing guided by science and expert advice. Our approach to protecting Canadians has worked. 
Canada has one of the highest vaccination rates in the world. Oh, wow. With one of the lowest death rates in the world and is also experiencing one of the fastest economic recoveries. We've seen how our measures have slowed down several COVID peaks and has given our healthcare system early warnings to adjust and respond. As the COVID situation evolves and as we learn more about this virus, we have been adjusting our measures. Many of these measures have been lifted. I and wonder why. That the COVID situation is not the same now as it was last fall when we implemented the vaccine mandate for travelers and transport workers. La situation de la All right, COVID-19. enough of that. We don't need to be uh, listening to... respect to COVID-19 Depuis has evolved denier. since... Le, le vent juin, no. plane or train au Canada. By key indicators, including the epidemiological situation and modeling, vaccine science, and high levels of vaccination against COVID-19 in Canada. As for travelers coming to Canada by air, land, and marine, there are no changes. Il n'y a pas de changement pour le voyageur qui for entre must continue to follow all entry requirements, including vaccination and using ArriveCan. As for cruise ships, vaccination for passengers so not much is changing. will remain in place. This decision is based on the unique nature of cruise ship travel, including the fact that passengers are in close contact with each other for an extended periods of time. Also, travelers on federally regulated planes and trains still need to wear a mask. Le voyageur doivent continuer de porter un masque. They must continue to wear a mask in planes and trains. Masks are an effective way of reducing transmission, especially in areas with... Res- you know what I've noticed is what these assholes do is uh, anything that's controversial that they could say, it's always in French, you know? It's always in French. I've, I laugh because it's that's how much we fucking don't give a shit about the French. They could say, as a politician, if you're a smart one, you say anything that you want that's wild in French because it just gets sloughed under because it's not in English. The rest of the world could give a shit to speak French. That's kind of funny, you know, that that's their edge. It's like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little off script here. It's like when Big Trudy is like, uh, you remember that clip where Big Trudy is uh, speaking? He, he, the interview is in French, but he's calling uh, unvaccinated people racist, misogynists, uh, Islamophobist. But he says it in French. He won't sp- say it in English because that soundbite would ring around the world. You know, obviously, like English is a is like the predominantly spoken language. I think universally across the world. You know, most people can understand it. It's it's. It's sweeping the nation, folks. But at any time that one of these wild takes that these assholes have, it, 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 it's always in French, which I find kind of funny. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm going to go a little off script today. That'd be like, that'd be like with my comedy, if I knew how to sp- speak French and I gave a shit to speak it, like I was going to move to Quebec and begin a new life as... Uh, one of them gays. <laughs> uh oh, one of those. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, hey, or one of them. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> Sorry, back on track. But it's always in French, and this I, I fucking I I can't say his last name. O- Omar Al- Al- Algebra Algebra. I'm butchering his last name. And I don't expect him to ever get my last name right, even if I'm on his radar. But it is kind of funny that they they always throw it around in French. Restricted space. So maybe we should listen to the On board planes, trains, or cruise ships. Our government will always continue to evaluate measures and will not hesitate <laughs> to make additional adjustments based on right. the latest public health advice and science. It's also important to note that while travelers will be able to board a plane without having to verify their vaccination status, 
international travelers need to verify public health requirements imposed by the country they want to visit. Many countries around the world, including the U.S., continue to require a proof of vaccination upon entering their country. I want to thank all the travelers who've been vaccinated to protect themselves and others, as well as the transport workers all who right. are working. All right. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Tirelessly to ensure the recovery of the sector. Thank you, everyone. Merci. And now I'd like to give the floor to Minister Fortier. <laughs> All right. No, we don't need to listen to that shit again. Uh, no. Get out of here. Let's read the article. Currently, all travelers are required to show proof of being fully vaccinated before entering Canada by air, land, or water. But starting on June 20th, the government will drop requirements that domestic and outbound international travelers be fully vaccinated uh, against COVID-19. Uh, foreign nationals coming to Canada will still be required to be vaccinated under the new rules unless they meet one of uh, the criteria for exemption. Ooh. If you're traveling international, be sure to check the COVID-19 travel rules for your destination. While the, tra uh, while the Transport Canada rules on vaccine mandates are expected to be lifted, some countries, such as the United States and Australia, still require foreign tourists to present proof of vaccination. Vaccine mandates also remain in place for passengers and crew traveling on cruise ships that dock in Canada. Testing and quarantining for unvaccinated travelers, unvaccinated Canadian citizens and permanent residents returning to Canada are still subject to quarantine and testing requirements. If you're, if you're an unvaccinated traveler returning to Canada, you're required pro to provide proof of negative molecular tests, such as a PCR test taken within 72 hours of your scheduled flight or land entry into Canada. Unvaccinated travelers can sh also show proof of negative tests, uh, show a proof of a negative antigen test taken the previous day, but the test has to be either administered or observed by a pharmacy, lab, or healthcare entity or telehealth service. Oh my God. Ugh. It's never going to end. It's never going to end. So basically the, the dropping, okay, Canada, I want to know more. Canada dropping vaccine mandates. Uh, Okay, is this the same fucking... So nothing got done. It was just a big press conference about nothing. Is that what I'm taking away here? This is what I mean. It's all fucking fugazi. Just a bunch of horse shit. Keep you angry. Keep you, keep you fucking locked in. Pay attention to me. What's going on with me? Oh... It's tiresome, you know? When does it end? Does it ever end? It's it, Like I said, it's a never-ending fucking novel. Is Harry Potter on steroids, for Christ's sakes, except at least J.K. Rowling... At least J.K. Rowling is transphobic. It makes it a little more interesting. And instead, we're arguing about fucking tests. You know? We had wizards and uh, fucking goblins battling one another... That that was written by a transphobic, and what are we doing here? What do we? What, what's the interesting part here? We got some fucking nerd spewing the same shit that he said a year ago, leaving you just pulling your hair out, looking at the TV. Fuck, fuck. Why? Everybody's the, the angry and angst. We got like a fucking week of uh, relaxation up here of just letting parties happen with the playoffs going on. Battle of Alberta. We were rocking for a minute there. That was a that was a great, great six game or five games. Sorry, great ten days in this province. Electric, drunk. The ladies were out. And I got to say, there's an increase of, uh, like, less bras out there. Wow. When did that happen? When did the... Who dropped the bra mandate? Bless them. 
That's all I got to say. God bless him. I don't know whose idea or who started it to just say, hey, let him hang. Let him hang inside the t-shirt. But God bless you. That is a campaign I can get behind, you know? Like, uh, and fucking, you know what I've never understood is like free the nipple. Who is against it? Who's literally against it? At the end of the day, I know there's like, oh, well, there's some titties that I would want to see. Listen, you've seen fat man titties at the swimming pool, you know? We've seen fat guy titties at the swimming pool. Are they worse than that? I highly fucking doubt it, you know? Any... I'd much look like uh, much much rather look at the saggy cans of like some old bird that had fake bombs back in the early nineties, looking like an eight ball in a tube sock. Like at that, who cares? Let them hang. Get the tan. What's the difference? Other than looking like uh, just a a tan or a hide left in the in the sun too long there's nothing wrong with that let them out let them let them breathe let those old girls just dance in the sunlight they were like they were meant to be that's the true war that we're against you know and i got to say the ladies are winning your nipples are offensive <laughs> offend me why don't you Offend the Christ out of me. If nipples are offended, then my God, and consider me an SJW. <laughs> I have, I will be, I, I, I am offended downstairs, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> that was retarded. Well, the R word. Yeah, I, I. T- it's an ever-changing world, and I'm I'm ten steps behind everything that's happening. I uh, th- th- so what we gathered there again. I'm a moron. Don't take my political commentary. I'm just trying to look at this and see like what what what's truly happening here. Is it just a nice little fluff up after Whitney went through what he did, and now they're talking about him in the House of Commons up here? Yeah, Spitting Chicklets, the podcast that Ryan Whitney and Paul Bissonette, aka Biz Nasty, do with Barstool, got a shout out in the House of Commons. Good for them. Good for them. When's my publicity kicking in? When's that going to happen for me? When do I get a shout out in the House of Commons? That mine would be a little different. It'd be like alt right extremist. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Extremist is a little far, isn't it? I'll take alt right. I wouldn't go extremist. Alt right is okay because those guys buy tickets to shows. They wear no mass at the shows. I like the alt right. They buy tickets, and they don't. And they don't complain. That's okay. I'll do comedy for those fucking lunatics. I'll do comedy for anybody. I don't give a shit. Come on out. See the show. You like it? You like your comedy a little dangerous? Well, perfect. We're coming to Saskatchewan. Buckle up. The road's a lo- the road is going to be bumpier than your fucking highways. I'll tell you that. It's a great show. Listen, I tour with guys that are banned from comedy clubs and got kicked off the CBC. All right. That's that's the world I want to in, involve myself into. I don't see this like mainstream narrative grabbing a hold of me unless it's like to put negative light on like after they're done rinsing this diagonal shit, you know, and giving them the business, then it's time to like move on to something else. They need something fresh, something new, right? So maybe I'll I'll get my 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 shot in uh, in the glorious light of the CBC and in whatever news outlets that are here in Canada, but until then, we 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 just get to sit in this office, right? We get to sit in this office and uh, spew this hot garbage that comes out of my mouth. Which uh, there'll be a little uh, scenery change here coming right away, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very excited. Um, we are going to be moving out of this office. I'm going to move everything into, I'm moving into a new place here at the end of the month. And uh, I'm going to move my little studio into the spare room that we're moving into. Uh, I'll be working from home. And then it's strictly this and stand-up comedy from here on out. So buckle up. We, uh, I, I see a lot of comments being like, when you come into this province, that province, hey, all you got to do is... Go to uh, a local bar or if there's a comedy club in your area is just mention our name. Get us on their radar. 
you want you want comedy that you like. I don't know. Obviously, if you listen to this show, you probably think uh, similar to what I do and find what I find funny. So if you want to see it live, you want to hear our jokes live, all you have to do is just recommend us to a local bar that has a stage and uh, your local comedy club. Now, some local comedy clubs are here in Canada are a little f- fucking gay now, if I'm being honest. And I don't mean that in like a derogatory way against, you know, homosexuals. What I mean by that is it's just, it's too, it's gone too far. It's gone too far. DangerCatShop.com. Use the promo code PODCAST69 to get 15% off your order. Any materials on this site. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that great? We're giving out deals. Plus, we are on tour. We are back out on the road doing stand-up comedy. Uh, June 16th to the 20th, we will be in Saskatchewan. All dates will be on our store, DangerCatShop.com. Click uh, the drop down menu to tickets and they are all right there uh june 16th 17th we'll be in saskatoon june 18th regina june 19th and 20th swift current and july 1st back in calgary for another danger room a safe space for dangerous ideas patreon.com slash danger 69 get exclusive com uh content sorry like our roast battles Woohoo! All roast battles start to finish will be on there for your viewing pleasure. Extra content will be on there as well, such as extra episodes of the Uncle Hack podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, then guess what? You'll enjoy more episodes of my ramblings of a fucking idiot. So there you have it. Patreon.com slash DangerCat69. Starting in July, we will have video episodes as well uploaded to the Patreon. And uh, we are working on other content as well to put on there. Uh, But anyways, here we are. Back to the episode. In the sense that the, the woke shit has now gripped upon them being involved with the arts or whatever it may be, you know, some of these, uh, some of these fucking people lean into it so heavy and you're not giving them the the freedom and see what this is, is it like, it's an attack on freedom of speech, which drives me nuts. This is where I'm, uh, this is where like I get a little passionate about because I am not one to really, I don't like that. Even if I don't like what's being said, I like the fact that they're able to say it and I'm all for that. That's why this HR bullshit drives me nuts, drives me absolutely nuts to know that guys can't even joke on a fucking job site anymore. It, it blows my mind that someone who isn't even involved with the with the work that happens the labor that happens putting your body through hell and back depending on what the job is and sometimes the, the how we express ourselves to one another is it's rude it's crude and that's how you get along that's how you bond i i rant and rave about this all the time but that's just how men bond right and there's women you want to know the filthiest fucking people on those job sites the women because they have to compete with already a filthy, crude, uh, outrageously funny group of gentlemen that find ball-busting hilarious. So now you're starting at a negative because, uh, you know, it's always... I'm sorry, but most of these guys view women as like these elegant species and we want to just have sex with all of you. They're all horned up. They're dragging fucking railroad ties for a living and then in the back in the day that when i say back in the day i'm going back to the the neanderthal days you know this guy would be viewed at as uh the leader in the group for fuck's sakes because he can drag 19 trees behind his ass you know where now now you throw these fucking nerds in place they can't handle the ball busting they've never been a part of like having a coach tell you you're a fucking idiot why would you do that why would you take a penalty in the last five minutes in a game that's three two for us to go to the provincial championship and you get your ass chewed out in front of 18 other fucking lads and you got to be the brunt of why you lost 
people that haven't went through that or like had a fucking boss who's a dickhead tell you you're a moron, you're an idiot, and then have to persevere and just think in your head like, yeah, yeah, you know what? And you're able to take it as a joke, you know? I think that just builds more character as you go on in life. So when you restrict words that you can and cannot say, it starts to... Uh, and I go over this. I've been over it too many times, way too many times. It starts to pent you up. You start to get angry. There's more rules, more rules, more rules. And suddenly you, you're starting to lose yourself and you're like, fuck, you're beaten down. Oh, I can't say that or else I'll lose my job. And you, you become weaker and weaker and weaker because there's more barriers you got to jump over just to be yourself, you know? I was talking to a guy on the weekend there and he was telling me, he's like, yeah, yeah, I almost got let go of a job because I it just, I made a comment about a political post and then some fucking people went screenshot that comment on a Facebook post, went right to my employer and tried to take my job away. And this was an actual conversation that I had over the weekend with a gentleman and uh, we were having a little whiskey together. Uh, had a had a nice little glass of whiskey this week and felt good. Uh, haven't haven't hit the piss in a while and uh, just had a few drinks, just a couple drinks, you know. Get me back in the groove. I was trying to beat a cold, so I I fucking was like, ah, you know what? I'm gonna go for a bowl of soup and whiskey. And uh, ended up these people were sitting at a table across from me and ended up shooting the shit with him. And he was telling me a story of along those lines. He just said he didn't, he disagreed with something. And because he disagreed with something that that should cost him his job. That is insane to me. It actually bothers me that nobody can handle just a full blown conversation with one another about what we agree with and what we disagree with. It's annoying. Quite honestly, it's fucking annoying. Get over yourselves, all right? There's much worse problems out there that you could be dealing with rather than what words some fucking guy says to you. Drives me nuts. What do I got? Uh, let's do the Fed question and we'll lead off of... Uh, oh, look at this. <laughs> Sorry, I just got an article sent to me that... Uh, oh... What do I got for you? Here we go. Family fun is on the rise in Alberta. Look at this. Domestic abuse and family violence on the rise in Alberta, organization says. As COVID restrictions are being lifted across Alberta, a different pandemic wages on family violence and uh, uh, wages on as family violence rises in the province. <laughs> Legal Aid Alberta says the number of emergency protection orders filed by the agency has risen 17% since 2018. An EPO is a court order that can protect people from facing violence by keeping away an abuser and removing them from the home. Holy shit. The agency offers free services for people filing uh, applications for an EPO and the number of orders they can open in 20. Uh, and the number of orders they opened in 2020 spiked to 2,267. It's part of what advocates call the shadow pandemic. Is that because of uh, the bruising or because it's not talked about? Are they writing punchlines in this fucking article for us? My God. Fucking 1995, we just called this discipline. Hmm. The court system uh, can, seem, can seem confusing and overwhelming. Our emergency protection order program provides duty, counsel services, and other legal support. You remember when you were a kid and it was like the kids help phone just came out and you would threaten your mom? Like, I remember getting a licking one time. Mom, I was being an asshole. I can admit it. I think uh, by this uh, time... Uh, if you guys listen to this podcast that my mouth probably has gotten me in more trouble than it, it it's ever needed to, you know, uh, or it, what am I saying? Well, it's got me in more trouble than, uh, it, it, than I needed to be in because I just didn't know when to shut the hell up. And I remember one time I told my mom, it was when, remember they used to run the kids help phone ads on, uh, like YTV or much music. I can't remember which network, but they would run those ads. And then it was, I, I remember telling my mom, I was like, I'm going to call kids help phone on you. And also her response was, 
It was good. Let me get the phone. By, I'm sure you'll have a phenomenal time with those guys. I'm sure they're going to take great care of you. You know, don't act like an asshole. I had to learn the hard way. So is this just a bunch of like, you know, maybe asshole kids uh, deserving what they need? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And I'm not, hey, I'm not condoning on uh, domestic violence. You know, some ladies can take a punch in this province. Uh, oh boy, I'm digging a hole. <laughs> I am digging a hole. I can't get out of, but I'm not saying that like, you know, domestic violence is, you know, it's funny or necessary, you know? Sometimes you get drugged into a fight you never wanted to be in in the first place, i.e. walking out of the bar and some guy just looks at you and thinks that this guy deserves to get hit. Okay, what have we got? Despite restrictions being lifted, the organization remains busy. It's shown a pattern that I don't think is going to change with a number of factors. We're going to see these numbers increase. Riddick said a looming recession, rising inflation, and higher costs of living all are all continuing to drive family violence, increasing the rates and severity. There it is. She, she used to process four or five today in Edmonton. Oh, boy. Now, 14 is not uncommon. Over the last year, the number of cases has assessed as extreme danger. The number of cases assessed as extreme danger. Holy fuck. Sam, I am. This means the complaints involved weapons, sexual assault, or physical abuse. The most common form of physical abuse I see that results in an extreme danger assessment is assault by strangulation. <laughs> okay. Shouldn't have laughed at that. Uh, Shilpi Uela, a uh, Calgary staff lawyer for the LAA, said in a written release, if claimants aren't given support, this is something that could easily turn into a fatality. The old Bart Simpson treatment. You know? Inflation's rising. The kid had, uh, you know, uh, y y we've rationed food inside of our own households now due to inflation and rising prices of fuel to get the kids to t-ball. And you know what? You work hard as a, as a man sometimes, as a woman as well, you know, to support your family. And sometimes you watch your kid eat the expensive cereal, he eats half a box in one sitting and that infuriates you to the, the, to the point where you just want to grab him by the neck and just... Mm. It's tough out there. It's tough out there. But thankfully that this organization is in and I don't... You know, maybe we are crossing the line finally on this podcast with this article right here. And, and uh, you know what, as a, as a survivor uh, from uh, what I would say discipline as a child, because I don't think that it was abuse, I think it was necessary in my case, as, a, an older uh, as an older adult looking upon, you know, receiving the belt, the wooden spoon. I remember the wooden spoon got brought out a few too many times. And then my mom would be pissed if I got the wooden spoon and it broke. Oh, fuck, Jesus. That was really... That was really the end of days, you know, that was, we didn't come from a family of wealth either. So a broken wooden spoon means we got to go back to the fucking dollar store and I got to sit in that, in that shitty old Grand Prix that we used to have and it would squeak like a motherfucker. You could hear that thing five blocks away and my mom, you know, God bless her soul. You know, we were proud of the things that we had, whether or not, you know, some people would look at it and be like, Jesus Christ. What the hell is going on here? But we we got it done. We didn't care. We were having a good time. We were laughing. Mom, and I, and I have to load in. So not only did uh, I have to fucking get my ass tanned by a goddamn wooden spoon, but then you got to go sit in this car that just like rocked and, and absorbed every bump. So you're at, you just felt it and you're like, oh, oh boy, that does not feel well. But I get it. I, yeah, fuck. Uh, doing the higher cost of living or, uh, okay, Riddick said, a looming recession, rising inflation, and higher costs of li living are all continuing to drive family violence. Yeah, no shit. Uh, no shit. So what's, what's going to happen when the recession hits? 
You know, what happens when our dollar is worth 15% less and you can't get any further with it and the rising cost of goods really sinks in? You had 17 calls a day, or 14, my apologies. Don't want to make the situation worse than what it already is. Uh, 14 is not, so what are we going to get? We got to get those numbers up, I guess. Strangulation. Uh, that is uh, that is something else to strangle. Uh, I just want to put my hands around your neck. Well, some of these might be just, you know, like some women enjoy being choked and maybe sometimes you take it a little too far and you're like, well, fuck, I didn't. I thought we, that's why I said, Brittany, we need a fucking safe word inside, this, inside these walls. Jesus Christ, you're turning purple and you're not tapping out. I said tap out. You said, don't quit until I pass out. And fucking here we are. I'm, in, I'm between a rock and a hard place, if you know what I'm saying. I got a rock hard place downstairs. Hey. Well, this is, uh, this has gotten out of control. This podcast is that, uh, you know what? After I just begged you to, uh, <laughs> hey, why don't you throw a great review on the pod for me? And then we dive into a story like this. This is got sent to me. And I was like, oh, what's going on here? And you open it. Well, fuck, I guess we got to talk about it now. Can't just bring something up and be like, you know what? We'll save it for next week. But here I sit, a goddamn fool, <laughs> coaxed into this. Thanks a lot. Holy shit. That, uh, that's great, isn't it? That's great. You know what? We said we were going to get into the fan question. Let's just do that before I get myself in more trouble than I need to be in. Holy. Oh, boy. All right. Where are we? Uh, let me get to... Uh, all right. Fan question of the week. If you want to be a part of the show, DM me on Instagram at unclehack69 uh, and, and throw in your fan question. Any problems you're having in life like this right here is your mom beating the shit out of you. Uh, that's something I, gonna, I got experience in. So I can definitely help you out with those. Is your girlfriend, you know, you're having relationship troubles, financial troubles. Are you trying to figure out what you want to do with your life? Listen, man, I am not a professional. I am not at all, and I'm far from it, and I shouldn't be giving advice to anybody. But here I sit before you with a YouTube channel and a podcast that dons, you know, probably 1,100 views on YouTube and a few thousand downloads uh, an episode. We're trying to get the numbers up. That's why I want to involve you. So if you do have a question, please DM me at UncleHack69. I think I'm shadow banned like a son of a bitch on there. So you got to type in the whole thing exactly like it sounds. Uncle, like it's spelt. And I know a lot of you are pretty much skull bent. You're remedial individuals. So uncle is spelt U-N-C-L-E. Hack is spelled H-A-C-K 69. The numbers six and nine on Instagram. But let's get into the question. How's she going, Hack? Not bad yourself. <laughs> Got a fan question for you. So when I was 20, I dropped everything and moved myself out to Edmonton from Northern Ontario. Had a blast in the trades, met some awesome dudes, and made a few crazy memories living, uh, living the fit-in or fuck-off lifestyle with the boys. Now I'm 28, and last year with the pandemic slowing construction... Uh, and my family guilting me, I reluctantly moved back and am living outside a, a shitty Toronto. I currently have a solid job and a pretty great girlfriend, but everything is so often I think about moving back out West because I miss it all. I've talked to the girlfriend about it and she's not very interested about following me. If I do go, I know we've been only dating for a year, but I like the girl a lot. Just not sure if it's worth dropping this good thing I have Going to be a fool for a few more years while I can. Thanks for the last whiskey. All right. Okay. Well, we're going to rewind it back here first. Sounds like you're very easily convinced by it. your parents guilting you. Where did I see that? Uh, I'm 29 now in last year with the pandemic slowing construction and my family guilting me. I reluctantly moved back and now living outside of shitty Toronto. Okay, well, there's your first problem. It sounds like you need to grow a fucking spine. Uh, 
Uh, uh, all right, I started off pretty rude there. My apologies. But I would say, listen here, whiskey. Uh, you, my friend, this is what happens with a lot of guys, okay? It's, it's and, and there's countless stories just outside of my hometown where they were given an opportunity uh, much greater than this, okay? Some of them had an opportunity to go play in the NHL and then life happens and I'm not going to talk about their stories, but did, to put things into context. And then those dreams didn't come to fruition because they decided to stay back and be the family man that they needed to be. And sometimes it all falls apart. Sometimes it all falls apart. And you ne Then when uh, you get older... Because if you're already thinking about it, it's on your mental. You want to do it, and you want to get up back out to the West. I know I'm I'm very pro Alberta. I'm from here. I grew up here. I like Alberta. Uh, I like the people. I just like being from here. I don't know why. I just think that the attitude that revolves in rural Alberta is great. The inner cities are kind of fucking stupid in my mind. Uh, it's just brain dead human beings that just don't really have an understanding that outside these concrete walls, there's actually a lot going on, much more than what they, they have inside their head. Like there's clan rallies every Saturday night at the local tavern where they light up a cross and dummy a bottle of whiskey and then beat the shit out of one another while yelling racial slurs to the immigrants that run every local business. You know, there's more to that. That's why I like this province. But it sounds like you're easily fucking convinced by anybody that's remotely close to you to do whatever, you know, you're easily pushed in a direction that you don't quite want to go down. Because it, you know, I he even says right there, I reluctantly moved back and am now living outside shitty Toronto. Sounds like you don't like it there. And you're trying to create excuses for you. I have a, I currently have a solid job and a pretty great girlfriend, but every so often I think about moving back out West because I miss it all. There it is. You answered your own questions on what you're thinking. Listen, don't let pussy hold you back. That is like the craziest thing. It's like, I just, I, I can't, I could not fathom. It would irritate me to my core knowing that somebody is making decisions for me in what I think is the right idea in the path that I want to go down. All right. If you're really, really true to yourself and this is like exactly what you want to do, then quit being a fucking pussy. Don't listen. Listen, if I listen to my, my mom when I first started doing these videos and it was making me no money whatsoever and I was putting it out on the internet, my mom begged me to stop because I was going to get fired from my job. If I listened to her, I would not be doing what I am today and living out the dream that I had instilled in my head when I was a youth, okay? Doing stand-up comedy, touring, and just get to be myself. I get to be myself for a living, all right? And write n nasty jokes and perform them to an audience that loves nasty jokes. So if I would have listened to her in my mid-20s, when I first started this horse shit, like what, six years ago? When I first started this shit six years ago, I would be in a whole different place. I would be miserable, all right? I know for a fact I would be miserable because I already didn't like the job that I had. It was good money, but I hated, I hate dealing with people that police you. They have, th th there's just the levels of management. And I understand a good company needs that. And we all got to abide by it. I do my job. I know what I'm told to do. But then there's the horse shit that comes with it of being like, well, you can't say that. I've been fired from a job for making a joke to a guy that, and one of the managers was in earshot. And I've been let go because of these reasons. So to, to, to be true to yourself, all right, would be, it sounds like you want to go and get this out of your system. Go get it out of your system. You don't think that there's going to be women down the line. You don't think that there's going to be other things that you could create out of just going and trying shit. It sounds like, you know, if she doesn't have interest in it and you do, fuck it. Don't let your family tell you what to do. They don't know what's best for you. Half of them probably, let me guess, half of them haven't done jack shit with their life. Let me guess. A lot of them are sitting there criticizing what you want to do because they haven't done jack shit in their own lives. They sit there and they criticize everybody fucking around them, even though they haven't accomplished fuck all. 
They haven't done fuck all in their time on Earth as they just revolve around the sun over and over and over again, getting fatter, getting crankier. And then they just want to tell you what you should be doing because they can't figure out what the hell they should be doing. So we might as well project it on somebody else that actually wants to go out and have a good time, live his life, experience some shit, go make some money, move out west, see what the people like are out there. No, instead, these fucking dipshits haven't left their fucking hometown in probably 30 years. Oh, we're going to go on a vacation to Toronto. We're going to go downtown. We're going to we're gonna have the aroma of, of shit and piss uh bellow off of concrete walls and go check out the hockey hall of fame how does that sound for a weekend getaway then we might go to niagara falls isn't that great isn't that great do you want to do that fuck them if this is what you want to do go do it you know too many young guys are controlled way too easy you get in this bubble of uh you know it it is when you break through it it's like when you get into a job the management okay i listen to this guy this guy seems to know what's best for all of us in here right he seems to know where to steer the ship and sometimes you have a shit manager and sometimes you have a great manager or a construction uh fucking what's project manager or your 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 journeyman that teaches you teaches you the trade sometimes you have a good one sometimes you have an absolute horrible one that you should not pick up any of that human's traits and it's okay to break through the barrier and go out and try new things i'm all for that i i my my philosophy that i run by is just always keep an open mind you know with anything really why not why not go travel see the world i got a young cousin right now that just won't break through uh leaving our hometown and going out and experiencing the world and traveling. Instead, it's like the party's happening here. Listen, dude, you don't party in that town for four weekends in a row. You save up the money that you'd piss away in the shitty fucking karaoke bar that every deadbeat, toothless loser goes down there on a Friday, Saturday night because it's their only escape from reality is linking up with the other fucking deadbeats that haven't done jack shit, probably like your family, so they can reminisce about the week's work and bitch about everything that happened in that time. From Monday to fucking Friday. And they all gather together to air their frustrations over cheap whiskeys and sing into a fucking karaoke machine that that is atrocious. It's a it's a it's an abomination to the art of music is what's happening up there. Nobody nobody has any talent, right? You go into these fucking places, nobody has any goddamn talent whatsoever. We're talking about fucking Guys that can barely keep it together to operate a forklift, right? And don't take that the wrong way. Forklift, certified forklift operators are respected on this podcast. But I'm just saying, dime a dozen, you know? You're five steps below a welder in in Alberta is what you are. Five steps below a welder is what you are. You're very, you you know, there's plenty of you is what I'm getting at. So I'm getting way off course and I'm just fucking, I'm letting everything out today. Holy shit. What an episode. What an episode this one's been so far. We've covered domestic abuse, travel restrictions, how fucking stupid I am. And I, then on top of it, I'm, I am again asking you to rate the show on <laughs> Apple iTunes if you're listening to it on there. Now, I don't know if Spotify will allow you to give this a five star, but that would be very grateful at this moment in the show. But... I currently have a solid job and a pretty great girlfriend, but see, this is, this is the dude. There's a like, Hey, fuck, things are getting a little too quiet. You know, it's okay to be a wild boy every now and then. It's, it's okay to be a danger cat every now and then. Sometimes you got to unleash the beast once, you know, every now and then you got to unleash the beast. But if you contain that beast and you're trying to be something that you ain't the white picket fence asshole, it's just, it's going to eat you alive and then regret starts settling in. And it really reminds you that this is not what I was meant to fucking do. And I really don't want to be the fucking dad of two kids that fucking hate me with a woman that is so goddamn boring. You know, 
when you say that she's great, I, I assume that just easy to get along with, you know, things aren't that exciting at home. This is what I assume when I hear the words great, because I feel like you're tricking yourself into thinking that you have the best scenario that where you're at in life at 29 years old. Listen, I'm 31. Look at me. Is this, is this where I expected? Dude, I came into the office today in sweatpants. It is f- fucking late in the afternoon. I am in sweatpants during a weekday. All right. I am not a role model by any means. And here I sit before you trying to tell you that there's more out there. There's always going to be more out there, but it's like, when is your cup full? When have you had enough? There is times to settle down. And I, quite honestly, if you can find an outlet to, to break it out into, you know, for me, the longest time, it was drugs and alcohol. That's where I went down. That's where I found my release. Okay. And now I found my release with stand up. And it's much more productive to be, you know, seeing that I want to be a stand up comedian. And I released that in stand up comedy now and my podcast. And I put my writing to the test and I'm always like, I became obsessed with it. Similar to like, I became obsessed with like being the weekend warrior. And I'm not saying that if that's what you want to do, that's what you fucking do and be good at it. Don't be a deadbeat. Uh, You know, like still, if you want to be a weekend warrior, at least have the gall to fucking wake up and be at work on Monday. There's nothing wrong. If you can party every weekend and have a good time, I just love to have a fucking excellent time. That was my issue. And then it became like that excellent time started scaling back to my excellent time began turning into, this is a fucking nightmare. I am just existing at this point, fucked out of my mind on snow, like snow and, and cheap whiskey. And it's not fun anymore. It, it became an issue. So debauchery is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of in your own terms of like when's too far. And I'm not saying that you're not capable of going the distance. I wasn't capable of going the distance. And if you know what, hey, I know plenty of guys that are having a great time still late into their 50s. And they aren't hanging up the the gloves anytime soon. They're going into late rounds and they want a dog fight of still having a goddamn great time on this planet. And if and if right now you're feeling stuck and you're feeling like uh, you know, uh you're trying to swim uphill to be something that you're not or upstream, I should say. Something that you're not, man, you got to change that. I don't know, dude. Like if you're allowing people to guilt you into decisions that you don't want to fucking make, then have a stand up for yourself for fuck's sakes. Don't let people push you in a direction that you don't want to go. And and you know what comes with that? It, it's, it's way harder to stand there and tell somebody to fuck off rather than just go with them. Hey, uh, no, I'll move back home. It is. It's, it's much, much more difficult, especially with your parents. Listen, I've, I've had some difficult conversations with my mom and what I want to do. And finally it came to like, I had to sit down and be like, listen, this shit makes me happy. I don't give a fuck about the money. All right. This shit makes me happy. I'm doing something that I thoroughly enjoy. So your, your comments mean jack shit to me. At this moment in time, and I listen, I would never say that to those exact words to my mother. I'm blowing it out of proportion for the podcast, okay? But we had a great conversation, her and I, about this is what I want to do. All right. This is what I want to do. And I want to, I want to venture into other things and have the freedom to be able to do so. And I, and whether I have your support or not, it is not going to affect whether or not I keep chugging down this road. So either you can be, uh, you know, in my, it, it, b- behind me rooting for me to make sure that it all works out or you can root against me. It really doesn't matter because both are motivating to me because I a would love to make you proud. And if you're going against me, I want you to fucking look like an idiot when I succeed. That's how I view things. So you, and, and maybe it's, Oh, fuck. I don't know. Maybe it's something psychologically wrong with me that I'm so stubborn to prove somebody wrong. And when I, when I take on, uh, a project or, or whatever it may be, but I, I enjoy having somebody telling me that I, I, you shouldn't do that, but it sounds like, you know, you're being a bit too much of a pushover and you're getting comfortable and it's starting to fuck with you. 
being comfortable, it can be good sometimes, but when it, when it starts to fuck with you and you start thinking about, oh no, fuck, did I make a mistake? Did I make a mistake? You did then at that point in my mind, I might be wrong. Therapists would probably tell you, they, well, you know, do you feel, do you feel? No, nah, fuck that. If you feel like you're making a mistake and you're missing out on some shit, you probably fucking are. Simple as that. Nobody says this shit to one another because we, we as dudes, we keep this locked up. And I think that it's easier to just DM somebody like myself to talk about this openly. And, and it, it, it's, it's, I don't know why, but like for us guys, we keep it together and we just do what's necessary and we try to provide, right? And, and sometimes it's at the expense of our own dreams, our own, uh, pretty much what we want to accomplish in life. And I, I, and I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't live like that, man. I could not fathom being a guy that just pushed everything aside. And, and now keep in mind, if there's like children or anything like that involved, it, it, a, that, that adds a whole different avenue. And, and if you can make it work, you make it fucking work. But it sounds like you, you just got a girlfriend. That's it. A girlfriend for a year, a year. You don't think that you can't find that out here? You don't think that you can't find that down in America, northern Alberta, southern Saskatchewan, northern Manitoba, Winnipeg? I'm sure, fuck, you could probably find love in Winnipeg, that hellhole of a city, that shit stain. You could probably find love there. You got to get out there, my dog. Go let... Go let the wings spread a little. Feel some different air, different coolness of the wind, you know? Different temperatures. Land on a different type of birch or bark, sorry. <laughs> different tree branch in a different pro uh, province. It's okay. Have some fun. Relax. Get out there. You're not going to be young forever. You're 29 years old, you, you know? You're coming into the best years of my life and I, and, and it's the best years of my life. Sorry. And the best years of your life in my mind, your thirties are the greatest years. Cause I feel fucking phenomenal despite my back being blown the fuck out and uh, feeling like hell this week. But I, I, I have a full on understanding of who I am as a person and what I want to accomplish in this lifetime. And I now can navigate those waters. I've went through the the horse shit of trying to figure out who I am as a person, uh, what I like, what I dislike, um, how I act, how I perceive things, my thoughts, and and what a well, you know, you know the, 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 your, my, my whole personality and how I react to things and what I what I want to do and what I don't want to do. And it 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 just is what it is now. And now I'm I'm becoming into the person that I've 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 always destined to be, but I've now allowed myself to enjoy that person. And listen, dude, get out there, figure it out. Who gives a shit? There's no fucking timestamp on when you have to be married, have children. There's no ticking little biological, cl well, biological clock. Yes. But keep in mind, there's no set rules to life. And I'm rambling and I'm fucking up what I'm saying right now because I'm trying to process it and say it at the same time. But I'm, what, I'm, what I'm alluding to is there's no rules to this thing in life. You don't have to be something at a certain age anymore. Those days, there's not arranged marriages, you know? you know? We're not having a shotgun style wedding out in the sticks of Alabama. Up here anyways, it probably still happens, but hey, you get what I'm saying. So go enjoy it. You're only here for so long. Enjoy your life. Things are going to hell in a handbasket, sir. So you might as well fucking die, nosedive your plane right into the goddamn ground and have a good time while you're doing it. So that's, that's, that's what I'm telling you. Take that for whatever it is that you need. Uh, if I'm an idiot, you can view me as an idiot. Make me that person that you're like, ah, he's a fucking moron. Why would I listen to him? Or use this as a way to be like, you know what? Maybe he does make a little bit of sense with his moronic ramblings on a podcast answering my question. But that's the joy of this is you can take it forever for whatever it is that you want in your head. And I'm just saying it how I'm viewing it. Okay. Don't allow people to push you in a direction that you don't want to be in. And don't let things hold you back. Okay? 
Don't let things hold you back. Sure. Yeah. A girlfriend. And I know some women and maybe some people would be a little upset with me being like, yeah, who gives a fuck? So what? If it's holding you back from doing what you want to do, let it go. And if it's meant to be, it's meant to fucking be simple as that. So get out there, be the man that you're meant to be and crush it. My dog, get out there, enjoy yourself. That's the joy of life. There are no rules. And ju- just existing eat, will ju- uh, eat you alive. It will eat you alive. Trust me, it will. Not having goals or aspirations or even just enjoying your time will fuck you up. And just existing in your little small town, going on your little vacation to the Hockey Hall of Fame in the Pistane City of Toronto will eat you a fucking live. And I thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Uncle Act Podcast every Thursday at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you want an extra episode where we go darker, dirtier, and we'll have more fun, and I'm a little more loose with my language, please subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com slash DangerCat69. There is an extra episode if you're listening to this right now, or you get this episode that you're listening to on all platforms 48 hours earlier than everybody else. Thank you, and good night.